everyone, I'm here with a walkthrough video of the Guardian Angel Messages Tarot by Radley Valentine. So I can't call this an unboxing because I did already open this. Um, I received this actually a couple of weeks ago and I was kind of having a bit of, of a down day and so I decided to open it and just treat myself to it. But I am going to do a walkthrough and tell you some of my impressions of this deck after working with it for a couple of weeks. So um, it's your typical Hay House kind of packaging. Um, we've got the deck and the book both in the box here. We've got a little description on the box. But one thing I noticed is they don't have the little cutout for your thumb on the side. So I actually had a really hard time opening it. It's a little better there now, but I still have to kind of shake the box to open it. So I really wish they would have put like the thumb uh, holes in here. That would have made it easier to grab. Um, this is the inside of the box. As you can see, it kind of looks like, it made me think of like purple silk, which is really nice. And then of course we have our typical guidebook as well. So fairly chunky. Um, it is typical. It just talks a little bit about the concept behind this particular deck, which is about working with your guardian angels. The other decks he has like the angel wisdom tarot, which I quite like. He talks about how that's working with archangels. Then of course he tells you about, you know, shuffling a card. You've got your typical three card pull here, three card spread, pardon me, and the Celtic cross spread. So some basic info for beginners. And then we go into the cards themselves. There's no thumbnail, but you will have a description of the card and its meaning, as well as the angel message and additional meanings of the cards. And that's for every, every different card in the deck. So it's your pretty standard basic kind of guidebook. So here's the cards. Um, the purple silk motif is in the bottom of the box as well, just in case you wanted to know. So again, your standard Hay House Oracle slash tarot deck size. Pretty typical. I have to say I don't care for the backs. They're not my favorite. They're not the worst. They are reversible if that's important to you. Um, but, you know, it just doesn't float my boat. It's, it's pretty ho-hum to me. Um, cardstock, it is it's sort of like a matte, it's a matte cardstock, but it's a matte with a bit of um, like a satin type feel. As you know, I am not a fan of matte cardstock. I find it sticks together, but this, because it's got a bit of satiny feel to it, doesn't stick together as much, so I, I like that. And, you know, it's typical kind of Hay House stock. Um, it is, you know, it does have strength to it, it, but it is quite flexible, which if you're riffle shuffling is pretty good. I like their stock. I don't mind a bit of a thinner stock because, um, I do like to have that one shuffling as opposed to like a thicker, more cardboardy type stock. So I don't mind that. So let's take a look through the deck. All right. So we've got here, um, some of the names of the cards have been changed. You'll notice. We've got the number up top, the title, um, and then some keywords on the bottom, which I think is really handy for people who are beginners to help them to kind of key into what the deck could mean. The borders as well um, are different colors depending on the suits, which we'll see as we go through. All of the major arcana are this beautiful purple. I don't mind the border because it's not huge. It's not obnoxious. So, And I kind of like having the color-coded borders. It gives you a quick idea when you're doing a big spread to see which elements are dominant in a reading. So it is this kind of, um, I don't know what you would call this, but very like computer photo manipulative kind of artwork. I don't mind it too much. It depends how it's done. This isn't my favorite, but it's all right. So you'll see that they have renamed uh, the Fool the Dreamer. Most of the cards retain the same names. And as you can see, they're very Rider Waite Smith based. Got the High Priestess. Again, we've got like diversity in this deck, which is always nice to see, especially in a deck that's trying to be a little more modern or doesn't have like a particular, you know, theme to it that would suggest otherwise. Got the Empress. Emperor. They've changed the Hierophant to the Wise Counselor. Got the Lovers. The chariot. I enjoyed their unicorns here. They have justice as eight in this one and strength as 11. Personally, I think if you're going to follow a Rider Waite Smith, I prefer it the other way, but you know, it's, it's whatever you prefer. This wheel is a bit, um, it's a bit creepy to me. I'm not sure why. I think because it looks like a bunch of porcelain dolls.
They've changed the hanged man to awakening, although he still is moving upside down. Death is release. Temperance is balance. The devil is ego. I do enjoy the image of a bird in a cage because it shows the bird could fly free, but doesn't, which I think is, um, reminds me of sort of how people are often pictured in chains and they could slip it off, but they don't. The tower is transformation. It's not particularly violent either. It's just like lightning striking it, but we don't have like it coming apart or on fire or anyone falling out. No weird babies in the sun, so that's good. Judgment is renewal. And then we have the world. So next we come to air, and it's um, the swords are all air, and you'll see that you've got this blue for the borders for them. It's interesting, instead of the heart... Um, the heart with the knives through it we've got here two angels comforting um, a person that is that is grieving six of air we've got the boat here The Eight of Air, the person isn't surrounded by swords. They're just sort of stopped by these swords. I f and they've got the icicles up here. So it's I find that the, the symbolism here, it's like they're trying to soften it quite a bit. But the Nine of Air at least is somewhat close. And then the Ten of Air, we don't have someone lying down and being like, you know, stabbed in the back. We have this angel with a um, an hourglass and the and the swords around them. Page of Air, Knight of Air. Now the Queen of Air, I have some issues with the Queens, which I will talk about as we go through. The Queen of Air, to me, this is an okay Queen of Swords, but I actually think that this, there's another Queen in here that to me seems more like the Queen of Swords. Um, this one to me maybe seems a little more Queen of Wands-ish, if there was a wand here instead of the swords, just with the elegant robes and things. Next we have um, the wands, which are fire. And you'll see they all have this ready orange border to them. The four of fire, I don't quite understand. I, w I guess they're supposed to be dancing, but to me, it makes me think more of the five of wands. Whereas this one, the five of fire, she just looks more confused. The nine of fire as well. I, I would prefer the wands being in front of her to show she's kind of defending something. Here it just seems like she's going for a walk in the woods. I do like this ten of fire where this person's just exhausted. Queen of Fire here, to me, this is much more Queen of Pentacles. Um, you know, there's just the way her outfit and everything. To me, the Queen of Fire, the Queen of Wands is somebody who is very, very outgoing. They're very elegant. They're very, um, they're usually like dressed very well, or very flamboyantly. And to me, this is a little more earthy. And so I would have put this as the Queen of Earth or Queen of Pentacles. So now we have water, and it's this blue-green kind of teal color that we have for our outline, or our border. Five of water. I kind of like the image of the spilt milk. I think this is nice for the Nine of Water, Nine of Cups, the idea of making a wish. Yeah. 
So the Queen of Water here, I would put this as the Queen of Air or Queen of Swords, just because I always find um, the Queen of Air to be more intellectual. And to me, this looks like somebody who is who is intellectual, somebody who's thoughtful. Um, they're writing down notes and things. They've got the glasses on and not to stereotype, but it generally is an image to me of somebody who is more intellectual and thoughtful. And now we've got the Earth or Pentacles has this beautiful green color on it. Like that she's doing some stained glass there. This is interesting Five of Earth because here they're showing the person being lent in where usually this shows the person outside in the cold. I would actually prefer it if the person was kind of maybe walking away or this was in the distance, almost as if it was to say the person doesn't realize that it's being open to them. Oh, I have these mixed up eight and seven. That's okay. And then we get into our final grouping of court cards. See, and this Queen of Earth too, this could be very much Queen of Wands as well. Because you can see like she's got like the gilding around her. Um, she seems to, she's got the bag with her. So again, like I feel like the queens are like just like a little bit off. I would have done them a little bit differently. Um, but to me, this is more, much more Queen of Wands in some ways. And then we have our King of Earth. So, um, you know what? I think that these cards, like, I, I feel like they're trying to definitely soften some of the harsher images in the cards, which I know is not everyone's thing. Um, but I think if somebody, you know, was maybe a little trepidatious about tarot cards, this would be a good place to start because you could treat it more like an oracle deck and you could use the keywords to help you to remember. Um, as for shuffling, it shuffles really well, whether it's overhand or it's riffle shuffling. Give me one sec here. It's a bit big, like for my hands to get it all the way across, but the shuffling itself is fine. All right, let's see what card we get. We have the King of Earth here. So let's take a look at what the guidebook says so we get an idea of the guidebook. Its keywords are prosperous, generous, and successful. Let me get out the book here. Turn right to the back. All right, so it says situations it has both situations and people which is really nice for court cards it says all of your plans are blessed right now this is a time of great prosperity and success finances flow effortlessly and smoothly promotions are very positive changes in your job are likely there may be unexpected career opportunities in your future make sure to accept them and then for people someone whose professional life is soaring or who is at the pinnacle of their career a powerful person who is deserving of this position due to hard work and great integrity. A very experienced person who genuinely knows what's best for everyone involved. Someone willing to offer up advice freely and with a warm heart. So that gives you an idea of how the guidebook is written. So it may not, I don't think this deck is for everyone, but I do think if you like working with Radley Valentine's decks, if you like angel decks, um, if you're somebody that maybe is just starting to get into tarot, I can definitely see picking up this one. Let me know what your thoughts are, what you think of this deck, whether it's on your list or not. Let me know. And thank you again so much for watching. And thank you to all my patrons for helping me and supporting me. I really appreciate it. And as always, peace and love. And rock on.